Are you ready for your breakthrough? Are you ready for your miracle? Are you ready for your healing? If you have been asking and been praying, today I want to bring you a new revelation on how to be ready always. Ah, know ye not that ye are kings, male and female, he has made all kings. Hello. As his sun rises, his glory shines on all his creation, on his children. These he died for, to give back to them the kingdom. Don't be deceived. We belong to the kingdom of God. Revelation chapter 1 tells us, and verse 6 tells us that Christ has made us as kings. You are a king. day to wear your crown. My name is Kofi Thompson and Christ Jesus has crowned me king. Hello, my name is Dr. Kofi Thompson and I welcome you to another episode of Retaking the Crown. Today I am treating the subject uh, how to be ready always. When we talk about readiness, we also have to think about preparation. There can never be readiness without adequate preparation. Many people, many people uh, get to a presentation and they mess up because their uh, preparation period was messed up. Today I want us to look at a scripture in Matthew chapter Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, we are going to consider from verse 1. If you don't have your Bibles with you, don't worry. Just, you know, check my screen over there and follow along as uh, we are going to read this scripture together. Okay, so Matthew chapter 25, Jesus began to give more uh, uh, illustration and more uh, revelation about the kingdom of God. So he starts Matthew chapter 25, verse, he starts uh, from verse 1, he says, Then the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. At midnight a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. I love that. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lambs are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went, the bridegroom, uh, while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. 
Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour which, in which the Son of Man is coming. Do you know something? That as Christians, what we need is the wisdom of God, always. What we need is the wisdom of God. The Bible tells us, as we read in, in, in Matthew chapter 25, Jesus said, five of the virgins were wise and five were foolish. Now, whether you are wise or you are foolish, there's going to be application in your life. You are going to apply it to your life, your wisdom or your foolishness or your stupidity. You are going to, you, it, it, it is going to come out and then the, the fruit is going to be visible. Everybody is going to see. So as Christians, we must seek the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is what separates us from the ordinary person. So if I were you, what I would seek is the wisdom of God. So you ask me, how do I get the wisdom of God? I want you to go to another scripture. Okay, let's look at another scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 20. No, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Sorry about that. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We are going to consider from verse 20. Verse 20. He says, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For sins... In the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. It pleased God, hallelujah, through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign, and Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ, hallelujah, we preach Christ crucified. To the Jews, a stumbling block. And to the Gentiles, foolishness. Uh, no, to the Jews, a stumbling block. And to the Greeks, foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. The power of God and the wisdom of God. That is Christ himself. I came to preach Christ to you. He is the wisdom that you need. Christ is the wisdom of God and the power of God. Are you hearing me? So if you have Christ, these two things are dominant in your life. The wisdom of God and the power of God will be part of your life and you will practice it. You will practice it. So the five virgins, the five were not fully prepared, but the other, one, the other five were prepared. The five who were not prepared, I believe that there were lots of distraction during their time of preparation. See, you can never be ready. You can never be properly ready without preparation. Are you listening to me? If your preparation time is interrupted, it will surely affect your readiness. Your preparation time. Spend time in preparation. Do you know that you can spend time, you can spend five, six, seven years preparing for three minutes of presentation? Yes, many people have done that. See, I will go to a, 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 um, another scripture with you. Romans chapter 12. 
Romans chapter 12. Please open your Bible over there. Romans chapter 12 from verse 1. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourselves a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let me read it again. I want you to really pay attention to the words. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is according to Romans chapter 12. Verse 1 and 2, there are three wills of God that are presented here to us. The acceptable, the perfect, and the, and the, um, he says, the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. You seek to walk in his perfect will. Okay, I will teach on that on a, on, 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 on a different topic. But the point here is that uh, right from Verse 1, he says we have to present our bodies. Present our bodies. There is no presentation without preparation. Are you hearing me? Before you go and stand to preach, you spend time to prepare. Those of you who are asking God for breakthroughs, you spend time. You spend time. Do you need a husband? Do you need a wife? Have you prepared? Do you know what a wife is supposed to do? Do you know how to carry yourself as a wife? Do you know how to carry yourself as a husband? Do you know how to take care of children? All of these are preparation. You don't have to physically have a wife, but as long as you are interested in that, in, in that, uh, uh, that aspect of your life, you must begin to prepare yourself. And some good parents, some wonderful parents, begins to train their children right from a tender age. Prepare them for the challenges ahead. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, for this is your reasonable service unto him. You see, you need to prepare the vessel. You know, I, I, I can go on and on and on. John chapter 6. John chapter 2. John chapter 2, the Bible says that there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. Jesus was there. You know the story. If you don't know the story, spend time to read John chapter 2. When the wine was gone, when shame and disgrace was knocking at the door, Jesus was there. Guess what? There were six pots, six jars that were prepared. And because the jars were prepared according to the manner of the Jews, according to the feast of the Jews, according to the, uh, uh, the festival, whatever the festival was supposed to be, they prepared the vessels for that festival. And when Jesus wanted a vessel to use to produce the wine, guess what? The ones that were ready were the ones that he used. I'm trying to knock at something today into your spirit. The ones that were ready, these are the ones that he used. He told them to fill the water pot with water because it was already purified. It was already prepared. And preparation takes time. You hear me? Preparation takes time. Don't be in a rush to present your case. Don't be in a rush to present yourself. If you are a preacher, if God has called you, whatever field God has called you, don't be in a rush to present yourself. Spend time in preparation. It makes all the difference. Jesus prepared himself for 30 years. Just for three years of ministry. Three years of ministry. He prepared himself for 30 years. How prepared are you? How prepared are you? Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable. For this is your reasonable 
service unto God. I want you to know that the Lord loves you so much. He has made you kings and priests. Ah, know ye not that ye are kings? Male and female, he has made all kings. Hello! He has made all kings. Kings spend time in preparation. If you are chosen as a king, they prepare you before you even sit on the throne. Thanks be to Jesus. He took all the preparation for us and he put us on the throne. But you see, you need to reign. You need to reign through Jesus. And uh, whatever gift, whatever talent, whatever avenue, whatever channel, whatever lot that God has given to you, you need to be the king over that. And you need to be a good steward. You need to be a good businessman on what God has given to you. You need to prepare yourself to make use of that. He gave some five talents. He gave some two. He gave some one. Those with five did a good business with it. Those with two did good business with it. But the one that had one, because of lack of preparation and foresight, he coiled back into his shell. Lazy. And God rejected him. God rejected him. Praise God. I want us to look at Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. We are going to consider from verse 36. Matthew chapter 24 from verse 36. Please look at that scripture with me. Hallelujah. It says, But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven. But my father only, but as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away so also will the, the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the meal. One will be taken and the other left. Watch, therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief will come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master has made ruler over his household to give them food in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Praise God. Blessed is that servant who is ready. Blessed is that servant who is prepared. How prepared are you how prepared are you? Can I tell you something? It takes a steady hand to hold a cup full of water. To hold a glass full of water. It takes a steady hand. God will answer your prayers. But are you preparing yourself for the answer? Many are asking God for one billion dollars. Do you know what to do with one billion dollars? Have you educated yourself? Have you researched? So many things we are asking God. Have you ever wondered why some of the prayers are delayed? Because you are not prepared. You are not spending time in preparation. You can be ready always. 
if you are going to spend time in preparation. You are always awake, even though you sleep at night. Mark chapter 13, verse 35 to 37, tells us to watch. Watch. Keep your spiritual eye always open. Luke chapter 12, verse 34, it says, keep your lamps burning. Okay, 34 to 36, keep your lamps burning. When you are prepared and ready, you will always be awake. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7, the bride is ready for her groom. We need to get our spirits, soul and body ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are loved. You are crowned. You are glorified. You are enthroned with Christ. Please, spend time in preparation. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. There must be preparation before presentation. If your preparation is interrupted, your presentation will be a mess. If your preparation is shaky, it affects your presentation. That is the way it goes. That is the way it goes. And I pray that the Lord will help you in your time of preparation. And when the time of showcase comes, the Lord will cause you to be ready. The Lord bless you and keep you and prosper you. This is my prayer for your life. In Jesus' name, my name is Dr. Kofi Thompson. Know ye not that ye are kings, male and female, he has made all kings. Hello, I will see you again. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. Okay, youtube.com slash C, the letter C, slash Kofi Thompson 1. Okay, there's no second Kofi Thompson. I am the number one. <laughs> YouTube.com slash C slash Kofi Thompson 1. Okay, you can also like my page on Facebook, facebook.com slash Kofi Tom. Facebook.com slash Kofi Tom. Kofi Tom is K-O-F-I-T-H-O-M. Please like my page on Facebook as well. I am posting uh, uh, videos every week on YouTube and on Facebook at least twice every week so that you will be blessed and you will grow spiritually with us. God bless you. I will see you again. Bye-bye.